Um, I want to talk about design system and React for designers. And the reason is because if you're a product designer, you may have come across these words, but you may not necessarily know what they are or what they mean to you or how to build them, right? And maybe that your boss or your business, the business owners found that, you know, introducing design system brings more value to your products and they don't know what it is, but they came to ask you. Maybe you went to a conference or you saw YouTube and you heard about design system and its benefit and how that's going to make your product design so much better, but you're not necessarily aware how or why. So the reason I want to talk about this is because I personally, I've been a product designer for many years and I recently gone through uh, building and design system for a company um, from scratch and I've just li literally gone through everything I worked with PMs I worked with engineers and uh, I've learned a lot of things I learned a lot of challenges and I thought maybe I have something to share with you guys for those who might be wondering where to start right so again I want to talk about design system and react I'm, I'm gonna try avoiding using uh, technical words so that anybody can understand so let's talk about react okay so you probably heard it you talk to engineers and you know you work with your team and you keep hearing these words about your components being built with react right like everybody's like oh react is so cool react is so useful react is a new thing and it, you know they're like oh yeah we're moving to react now you know but then you're like yeah okay we're using react that's cool but like like how does that matter to me like what does that even mean to me as a product designer right exactly I you know I was in a technical person so I had the same idea everybody's talking about react I'm like yeah I know react react is like a JavaScript library right but then I'm like thinking like what does that even mean JavaScript library yes that's right react is a JavaScript library but what does that mean <laughs> let's put it this way JavaScript is a language you can communicate an idea to execute something using that language and there may be like 10 different ways to say the same thing it's a language and a library means that there's a lot of predefined codes in there meaning there's like a, a lot of these predefined vocabularies and words that are useful to use for instance the word UX did not exist before and people would not know what it is today we can just say UX and get the point across without having have to explain about what UX is, how it's about being a user advocate, doing a user study and applying to create value to the products. It's about what colorful post-its and hipster glasses, you know, all that nuances is, is contained within that word UX. And we can just say UX to communicate about it instead of having have to explain the idea from scratch, right? So it's the same thing. React has these bunch of these vocabularies that they can use to effectively execute or build something. So that's cool. And what's cool about React is that it's, it's developed specifically for building UIs, right? And of course they're building it to improve something, which is to allow UI components to self-contain all its own concerns and definitions within. Before it was much more tedious to handle states like buttons. You have a button and then you hover it and change colors and then you click it and it gets pressed and when you release it and then it changes again and all these states and how it behaved, like how it communicated, how the UI communicated to change its own state was kind of inefficient. But now React makes it allow those components to have its own contained definition about how it behaves. And what's cool about this is that now we can create these modulated components, right? You can have this button and everything about button is inside this little button component. So I don't have to worry about its states and properties and stuff like it's inside this box, right? And then I have this checkbox. Maybe I have this checkbox component here and like colors, states, and how it functions. There, it's all in, written inside here. So all I have to do is just grab this component to use the, the checkbox. And this is actually the same way designers manage their own design assets. If you work for a company, likely you have existing UI kit, right? You're not drawing a box every time you need a button. You have all these assets already existing. If you're using Sketch or Adobe XD or Figma, whatever, you have all these existing components. You're literally just taking that and placing it into your design. And React allows engineers to do the same thing, you know, manage and create 
you, like page UIs the same way, very similar to the way designers do. Designers have a set of symbols and we put that to create a page. Engineers have these set of components and they just like literally place it in to create the page UI. And on top of that, imagine uh, designers. You have like a bunch of these symbols. You have a button symbol, icon symbol, checkbox symbol, and you can place that on the canvas. And then let's say the button says button, like the text says button, right? But then you can override that to say something else like submit or save, right? So these components, not everything is hard coded. It just contains its logic and rules. Maybe the button allows it to stretch and maybe also the button can have a different height or maybe you can make those buttons borders disappear in just the text or maybe or you can change the text you can do these overrides the react components is exactly the same way you can place it and you can override these properties so that you so that it's more reusable right because you can't have button to say button on every single place you use it you want to be able to you want that component to be flexible enough so that you can reuse it and so it's just like symbols in design and thirdly in design though you can take multiple components and you can kind of like nest it or group it together to create a bigger component almost like a widget or something right and you can save that as a symbol and reuse that the, the whole widget and the, again the same thing you can say for engineers they can literally take these like react components and you, they can assemble it and then they can save that assembly as a component so next time the same group of these components are being used instead of like assembling it again you can literally take that widget and use it as is so basically react allows engineers and designers to work in a way that's very similar because we look at components the same way these modulated um, and the concerns are all isolated and you can literally just take these to build your ui you can nest them and create bigger components that does more things and you can scale it that way you have these base components you can put these together and you have a little like medium sized component and then you put these together and then you create bigger components maybe you take those and create like a template for the whole page maybe have a table and you have the table controls like search and sorts and views and action buttons and all kinds right and maybe you have that table controls and below you have a table and this whole thing you will save it as a component the next time you need a ui that just needs a table then you'll grab that component place it and you're done and then what's cool is that it's inheriting all these like individual components within that bigger component so if i go back here and take the original button component and if i update the color from blue to green then the whole system that uses this button will get updated to green so that's the beauty of using modulated components and that's also what design system is design system is about making that whole system so that you're not doing any redundant work it creates this system that you're managing rather than making a design every time from scratch so i want to transition towards talking about design system so i think you kind of understand what react is and what design system is right and why that benefits you as a company and just to elaborate on it design system benefits you because it is so much faster and easier to create because every time you create something it becomes reusable and you can just put those together so that makes it super efficient super fast and it saves us time and now also because like everything is reusing every all of these like templates and widgets are reusing the base components for engineers it's going to save a lot of time too because they don't have to code anything new unless it's something brand new right so literally it's just about how you set the building blocks together but every single components already exists as a code so they don't have to create new things all the time so that's gonna save a lot of time for the engineers um, and also it adds consistency because you're not using 50 different buttons and 30 different toasts and 200 different colors right constantly reusing everything so it creates a very consistent ui and not just consistency of the style but it's also consistent behavior because you define it once and you use that in hundreds different places so it should all act the same it will act the same that's why it's super consistent and when the style is consistent and well the behavior is consistent 
And when products and engineers and design, they all have more time to focus on the experience and the higher level problems. And all that combined together, what creates a better product that adds value to the user. Users understand things better because it's consistent. And you know, maybe the product is so big, but wherever you go, it's communicating to the user in the same way. Users will not get confused about learning because it's always being communicated the same way. So it builds trust and it gets easier to use. So that's why it adds value, right? See how it's all connected? So that's why design system is good because it's a win-win for everybody. So then why are not companies doing it? Well, um, one of the reason is because people don't necessarily know how to or where to start. So that's the biggest question. So building this, designers can't do it by themselves. They need help from other departments, from product managers who are the ones that literally set the goals and the vision for the product. And we also need help for the engineers who are the ones that actually build individual pages and how everything works together, right? Designers can't just do it by themselves because if people don't adapt it, if people don't use that design system, then it's just gonna be your personal resource. And that's not the point of design systems. And the best way to do it is to standardize your UI, of course, yes. So every time you work on a project and every time you're using something, you assess each component and you start setting a standards for each component, right? You wanna probably start with all these basic like buttons, icon, checkbox, input, textiles and grids and all these like stuff that gets used everywhere. You're gonna set like individual rules and you're gonna set these are the standard states, right? Hover state, active state, default state, disabled state. And then once you have all that, you wanna to talk to your engineers and you want them to be built properly or if it's already existing, then you want them to configure it properly. And you're setting really rigid rules around how it should behave and how it should react. But you want to be also flexible about making them extensible because, you know, maybe the current design and rules and guidelines may um, may work in your current project, but you may get a new project and you might have to add more configurations to each component. So you want to be flexible, but you also want to be rigid about the rules. I think the important thing is that design system, system takes a lot of investment, so you can't be just doing just design system. You still got to be working your own everyday work. So what we did is like we kind of leveraged our our current project, right? We need to design for our current projects. In our current projects, we have a bunch of these requirements that needs to be meet, met. So we will use those standard components in that project. And then we'll start finding some patterns like, oh, project has like these cards and I think these cards needs to be standardized. So I'm gonna set rules for these cards and I'm gonna ask the engineers to build that card component and then the project can use that, right? And then once the project is done, I can use this card anywhere, anytime. And maybe a different project comes in that needs cards. So they use these cards, but they look kind of off. Maybe the cards look too big or something. Well then for that project, pull that card component and then modify it so that it, it supports like a smaller version, right? And then ask the engineers to extend the card components to support that smaller uh, size. And then once it's updated, you plug that into that project. And now you have a more reusable card component. And you just keep repeating that for every project. And you're setting these guidelines and rules. And that's how you go about building a design system. The, the other important thing about getting your design system set into your development is that to communicate, to share, because nobody wants extra work, right? So if you just like bring up the people and they're not, they're not gonna say yes. They're gonna be like, oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I heard about it, but they're not gonna use it. At the end of the day, they just wanna get their work done. They wanna go home, right? So you need to communicate the values of a design system. Why design system is gonna help a product manager? Because design system, again, like I said earlier, is gonna add value and consistency, and it's gonna help users, and it's gonna make the product look better. Not just that, but design system allows you to create and prototype things faster because you have these like bigger components. So PMs will save time and they can expect a better UX and they can expect a, a better product. So of course they want that, right? What about engineers? Do they just want to hack it and get the UI done? Well, sure, that's gonna save his or her today. But what about in two years, three years, right? 
you're you're gonna repeat that, repeat that over and over. If you don't do it now, later you're gonna have to do it. But guess what? With design system, every time you build something, you can already reuse that next time, so you don't have to build that again. So the more you build them, eventually you're gonna have everything, and then you might not even have to build anything new. Maybe it's about just pulling the right thing and plugging it in, right? So over time, engineers gonna save so much time, and they can focus on bugs. If they need to, or if the UIs are already proven to not have bugs, and then you won't even have bugs because, like, you're already just reusing the same thing over and over. So, engineers gonna save so much time. You need to communicate these values to your stakeholders so that they will be on board with you to adapt the design system that you're trying to build. It's also like about a brand, right? You have to establish this design system brand inside of your. Company, you have to be the advocate, and you have to constantly communicate them why it's valuable. You have to enforce them to use it properly and educate them. You need to do that. Keep doing that in order to get traction. And and guess what? Like at the beginning, people might be kind of reluctant to adapt it, but once they adopt it, they're gonna start liking it because it it's got immediate return on investment. You get the benefit from it right away because once you build it, you don't have to build anymore. You have like enough components. You don't even have to recreate it. It's all there, right? So uh, design system and React. I'm gonna just summarize it real quick. Uh, React is a dictionary full of these vocabularies that are predefined that engineers can use to communicate, to create, Component and uh, React also allows engineers to create very smart and effective components where they can manage those just the same way designers manage our design symbols and assets. Easy to maintain because they're all self-contained, so you can literally just manage these modulized components and just plug and play. And design system is basically using that um, quality of React and making like um, granular to more. To more scaled levels of components and making them all intertied with together so that updating a bit of it or a small component will basically update everything else and constantly constantly coming up with these new combination of design patterns and combination of um, UIs to create new widgets that you can constantly reuse and this way it's gonna save time for everybody and it's gonna make the product value much higher in order to achieve this you will need to first start standardizing all the base components and always use them in a project. And every time a project requires a new pattern, then create that as a component so that next time you don't have to use it anymore. And next time you use it, and if it's if it needs to be extended, then just only focus on that extension. Like you know, now we need to support like a smaller size. We need to support different colors. Those like extensions. You just want to focus on that and add that to the content. Again, you can reuse that next time. And finally, you want to communicate as much as you can the benefit and why they should be adapting the design system. Because you're not fooling people. This is proven that it's actually going to save so much bandwidth in people's life at work. It benefits everybody. So you need to study that and educate them and get them adapted. And you're also helping them. So build that awareness in the company. That's kind of how you go about building a design system. I hope you guys understood. That was kind of like a, like a very quick story that I wanted to tell you. I hope I made my points clear. I'll see you next time.